Hey everyone and welcome back to another innovative investment idea. My name is Dave and in this video we'll be taking a look at Unity Technologies, creators of the eponymous platform and arguably the world's most popular application and video game development engine. But before that, just a friendly reminder to hit the like button at the end if you enjoyed the video, but also the subscribe button if you're new, as it really helps to support the channel and you'll get notified of more stock market content just like this. So with all that said, let's dive right in. Unity Technologies, ticker symbol Uniform on the New York Stock Exchange, is an American company based in San Francisco, California, just outside of Silicon Valley and many of the world's leading technology companies. It was, however, originally founded from a basement in Copenhagen, Denmark, as over-the-edge entertainment around 2004 by three programmers. The trio had initially set out to develop video games for a living, but quickly realized that they had in fact the skill set and a unique opportunity for an even greater purpose when it became clear that there was a huge gap in the underlying tools used for 3D modeling and video games at large, and quickly pivoted towards streamlining and simplifying the creation process. Although now ubiquitous and thought of as one of the most in-demand engines for video game development, Unity was conceived at a time when there weren't many tools available for independent game developers and the Unreal Engine was unrivaled especially for AAA development, a mantle it still more or less holds today, although Unity has certainly entered the conversation. By early 2005, after about a year of collaboration, Over the Edge Entertainment released a showcase game entitled Goo Ball using the new engine they had created from scratch and although the game was a commercial flop by conventional metrics, they were now well on their way to success with credible proof of concept. Using reviews and feedback from Google as a launching pad, they were able to turn whatever little profit that the game did generate into a fledgling startup with enough capital to scale up, hire a few more developers and shift complete focus towards advancing the in-house developed platform. And although both Over the Edge Entertainment and Google had started their journeys as Mac exclusives, there was certainly a master plan in motion to unify developers across the fragmented operating system landscape in order to create a singular or agnostic platform to increase its viability and encourage uptake by the diverse array of developers and studios out there in the video game wilderness. The studio even had the foresight to specifically pursue mobile gaming as a critical sub-segment before there really was even such a market mostly due to the promise and buzz surrounding the release of the very first iPhone when it was unveiled by Steve Jobs back in 2007. That same year also coincided with the official rebrand of the company from Over the Edge Entertainment to Unity Technologies, obviously the name we know it as today. Almost two decades on, and the company is certainly a dominant force in the video game development industry, with a plethora of extremely successful titles having been built on its platform, such as Mega Hits Pokemon Go, Hearthstone, and Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. According to news outlet TechCrunch.com, they've almost entirely cornered the market in the augmented and virtual reality application and gaming segments with an almost 60% market share, have actually realized their goal of becoming the premier platform when it comes to mobile gaming with an overall 50% market share and has become the tool of choice by gaming developers. And unlike many tech startups that despite a robust product offering, lack the business acumen to deliver consistent growth and return to investors, management has proven that it will do whatever it takes to succeed as a business, such as by hiring former Electronic Arts CEO John Riccatello. Riccatello has served as its Chief Executive Officer since late 2014 and is renowned in gaming development circles for helping to steer EA from a once promising publisher and game studio to now one of the premier names in its field and despite some of the other legal controversies that surround his appointment as studio lead, he undoubtedly brings veteran leadership and a level of business savvy many other companies in the industry just don't have. Unity went public in September of 2020, opting for a traditional market listing in lieu of the slate of companies that have gone the SPAC route in recent times. It was, however, overshadowed by the success of Snowflake becoming the largest software IPO in history as they listed only a couple of days apart. As an under-the-radar candidate, the company has shined during its early days, taking off from a pre-listing price target of somewhere between $34 and $42, debuting on the NYSE at $75, surging 44% during its first trading session, and as of recording this video in December 2020, has now eclipsed even the $150 mark. 
The current market cap of the company, given the $150 price tag, sits well north of $40 billion US dollars, which can certainly be argued as rather lofty. Crosstown rivals Epic Games is estimated to be only worth half of that at around $18 billion, held privately by founder Tim Sweeney and Chinese juggernaut Tencent, and the aforementioned Electronic Arts, is currently valued at under $40 billion. Add to the fact that Unity has yet to achieve profitability and the red flags could leave some investors extremely hesitant to jump on board. Unity actually incurred a net loss of $163 million in 2019 and as we'll see shortly, for the trailing 12 months, the losses actually expanded, coming in at closer to negative $250 million. But before sifting through the numbers, it's first important to understand how Unity actually generates its revenue, which in turn determines its valuation. Like many startups of this era, it operates under a software as a service or SaaS model, collecting licensing fees on a seat or per user basis, either charged monthly or yearly depending on the particular plan a company chooses to purchase. The model is both flexible enough to cater to small mobile development studios employing only one or a few people, but can scale up quickly for enterprise level studios with dozens, hundreds or even thousands of developers building one or several products simultaneously. It should also be mentioned that there exists an unquantifiable X factor in Unity as an investment, and that is the outside chance that the company could eventually be acquired by an even larger company. There have already been rumors floating about from well before the IPO, when for example author Blake Harris published a lengthy email by Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to then Oculus CEO Brendan Irib mulling over Unity as a takeover target. Facebook has for years been slowly building its presence in the AR and VR space since the acquisition of Oculus in 2014 for $2 billion, and with the wealth of cash at its disposal, could easily scoop up Unity even at a premium valuation. Whether anything like this comes to fruition is purely speculative of course, but with many other record-breaking recent tech acquisitions leading the way, such as Nvidia picking up British chip designer ARM for a cool $40 billion, coincidentally the market cap of Unity, Microsoft's $7.5 billion purchase of ZeniMax and Bethesda Softworks, and the acquisition of Slack by Salesforce for almost $30 billion US dollars, it is certainly not unreasonable to think that this is a distinct possibility down the road, which could make even more sense when we look at Unity's long-term growth and total addressable market. As we take a quick peek at its income statement as reported by Yahoo Finance, here are the net losses of $163 million and $250 million in 2019 and the trailing 12 months respectively, as mentioned earlier. Their $40 billion market cap and $710 million in revenue indicate a price-to-sales ratio north of 50, which does reinforce the idea that at current levels, Unity does appear to be overvalued. As a quick comparison, the industry average PS ratio, consisting of other players such as EA, Take-Two, and Activision Blizzard, sits at about 10, or a fifth of Unity's. This of course means that buying at the current levels would have to factor in significant downside risk, but keen investors should be quick to pounce on any sort of downwards correction. If we scan across the income statement for the past three years, what immediately leaps up the page is the tremendous revenue growth year over year. 40% between 2018 to 2019, and 30% between the trailing 12 months and 2019 at large volume. Overall, it has managed to suppress its cost of revenues to relatively low levels as compared to the top line, increasing from only $81 million in 2018 to around $150 million in 2020 and maintaining a gross margin at about 80%. The key to evaluating software companies is to place less emphasis on the early overhead and development costs and focus on the ongoing subscriptions and sustainable cash flows in the coming periods over time, and Unity's high margin certainly delivers in that regard. Another important aspect to note, if we delve a little deeper into the $250 million loss for the trailing 12 months, is that roughly the same cost was incurred in selling general and administrative expenses, which presumably included underwriting and other payables as a result of its market listing and transition from privately held to public enterprise. Assuming for a moment that SGA had not ballooned but remained flat year over year from 2019, all things being equal, the net losses should have theoretically also remained flat which does make Unity's financial position much more palatable than as cursory or surface level reporting might indicate. Unity reported its Q3 2020 earnings report on November 12th to back up its strong income statement and was met by positivity from the market. 
It posted strong revenue numbers of $200.8 million for the quarter, crushing average analyst estimates of $186.9 million, but a slightly higher net loss of $0.97 cents per share compared with an average analyst estimate of $0.15. Cents. The higher net loss from operations of $141.7 million, or 17.6% of revenue, compared to a loss from operations of $41.7 million, or 31.9% of revenue, in the third quarter of 2019, stemmed from the previously mentioned inflated SGA costs related to the IPO and public listing. To reiterate, as one-time costs, Q4 and beyond should see these figures largely deflate to its pre-IPO levels in the worst-case scenario. It also demonstrated impressive revenue growth at 53.3% compared to the corresponding period last quarter, and its non-GAAP loss from operations was only $8.4 million versus a loss of $27.9 million year-over-year, or less than the third what it lost a year prior. The substantially smaller loss provides mounting evidence in numbers that the company is actually decreasing its operating costs over time and thereby becoming more efficient. Moreover, Unity is also guiding robust Q4 sales at somewhere between $200 million and $204 million in the fourth quarter, and an expectation that the full year will come in between $752 million and $756 million, alongside an adjusted operating loss between a much smaller $66 and $71 million, compared to the indicatively higher figures we saw in the income statement. Two final points from the Q3 report are the increase in customers that spent at least $100,000 rising significantly to $739 from $553 a year prior, indicating traction even within larger studios. And the increased net expansion rate also solidifies its overall metrics, up to 144% from 132% from a year ago, which tells us that its recurring revenue stream is ticking upwards. If there were any doubts about Unity's growth prospects and direction before the Q3 earnings report, surely the company has delivered on its potential and appears to be poised for takeoff in the coming periods. According to a survey conducted in the UK as recently as August 2019, as depicted here by Statista, Unity's platform ranked as the overwhelming heavyweight up to three times more popular than other engines amongst the participating developers and studios, even overshadowing the Unreal Engine and other large proprietary tools such as EA's Frostbite Engine. As noted in the bottom right, the percentages don't add up to 100%, because the studios that were surveyed were allowed to select multiple responses depending on whether more than one candidate was being used internally. Still, it's clear from a product perspective, the Unity platform is well-liked, which bodes well for its growth and future uptake potential. The company is showing early signs of becoming a front-runner in an industry expected to be worth hundreds of billions of dollars, as we'll see in the next graph. Here is the value of the video game market worldwide, starting from 2012 and projected out to 2023. Certainly the Unity platform can be used for many purposes beyond gaming, but these numbers should at least provide a foundation for total addressable market analysis. The data paints a clear picture of consistent growth of somewhere between 5-10% to annually and set to surpass $200 billion a few years from now. Revenue is obviously divided across many participants, such as the developers and publishers, but also many other venues such as Steam and other digital content providers and retailers. What we do know is that based on the management guidance of $750 million annual revenue for Unity this year, the percentage it collects represents less than half a percent of the total 2020 $160 $160 billion market. Extrapolating that forward to $200 billion in 2023 suggests it should almost certainly hit $1 billion in revenue. It's also possible and highly probable that as the platform becomes more ingrained within the community and developers become more dependent upon it, Unity can monetize much more effectively than is currently the case, using YouTube and even Netflix as concrete examples that have increased or introduced premium pricing options to existing members and who have also achieved this with relative little disruption. The company will always hold that particular ace up its sleeve so long as it remains the front runner, and the enormous $200 billion total addressable market should provide a deep well from which it can draw upon and add considerable heft to its top line if slash when it chooses to pull the trigger. The mobile gaming segment, while not often talked about as favorably by hardcore gamers, who often point to the technical prowess of the desktop and its AAA titles, actually equates to 100 billion of the 200 billion gaming pie. It's well established that Unity dominates in mobile gaming, statistically the largest and fastest growing segment of the gaming industry, 
where it has a 50% market share and where Unreal is not at all a common alternative. Neither engine could be categorized as easy for a complete novice to develop on, but the common choice by individuals and small teams creating casual mobile games is absolutely Unity. As a final thought, it's also worth highlighting that Unity has integrated an in-game advertising network for mobile games into its platform, which helps its participants get the highest bid from among potential advertisers. Again, according to the TechCrunch.com article that will be linked in the description, Unity is now one of the largest mobile ad networks overall, not just within gaming, serving roughly 23 billion ads per month, of which it currently does not monetize. There is still a massive reservoir here that will create a financial deluge once tapped. It is difficult to ignore the extreme price run-up of Unity since the IPO, and it is certainly reasonable to question whether this can be sustained. The high price to sales ratio and closer inspection is another reason to give pause, but having now analyzed its past performance via income statements, its stellar Q3 earnings report, and the tangible growth of the underlying total addressable market, Unity sure looks like a long-term winner. Its proven and steady subscription-based revenue stream, the huge ongoing society shifts towards the mobile platform, and its increase in popularity amongst the development community are all key reasons to believe in the future promise fundamentally. There will no doubt be ups and downs in the near term, but placing a small bet and building a position over time on dips or market-wide corrections should set up investors with solid returns over the next 2, 5, and even 10 years. Don't miss out on this fantastic company today, and your future self will thank you tomorrow. That about wraps it up for this video. What are your thoughts on Unity and whether it has or will have a place in your growth portfolio? Post them down below in addition to any other questions or comments. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and even consider subscribing to really support the channel if you haven't done so. Before I go, click on the top video here to take a look at my analysis of Caterpillar, a dividend aristocrat and the world's largest mining and construction machinery manufacturer, or down below for a breakdown of NEO, a high risk, high reward EV company from China that has actually outpaced Tesla in stock price growth in 2020. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.